Happy New Year to all! This is Alexei, with the first Power Semiconductor's market update in 2023. While many are still on holidays break, I had prepared the latest market data for you. So let's check, what is new in Power Semiconductor's industry? Disco Corporation, a semiconductor manufacturing equipment manufacturer, has developed two types of grinding wheels, the Polygrind PW21 series for silicon wafers including memory ICs and logic ICs, and the GFSC series for silicon carbide wafers. Disco Corporation has developed DFG8541, a fully automatic grinder that can process silicon and silicon carbide wafers up to a maximum size of 8 inches. This is the successor equipment to DFG8540, aiming for stable thinning while maintaining high cleanliness as well as improved operability and productivity. By making a high torque spindle an option, it is possible to support difficult to process materials that have high rigidity such as silicon carbide responding to the silicon carbide power semiconductor manufacturing needs that have been growing due to the global movement towards decarbonization. The European collaboration project Power to Power has been successfully completed. Over the past three years, 43 partners from industry and research jointly developed novel power semiconductors with higher power density and energy efficiency. Power semiconductors are necessary in all stages of energy conversion in generation, transmission, and use of electrical current. More efficient semiconductors make a significant contribution to reducing carbon dioxide emissions despite rising global energy demand. Universities, research institutes, small and medium-sized enterprises and international corporations participated in this project, which was coordinated by Infineon Technologies Dresden. Texas Instruments' latest 300mm wafer fab in Utah, LFAP, has started production for analog and embedded products roughly one year after Texas Instruments' purchase of the facility. The addition of LFAP to Texas Instruments' manufacturing operations provides increased 300mm capacity to support the continued growth of semiconductors and electronics. The FAP has more than 275,000 square feet of clean room space and a highly advanced facility includes 7 miles of overhead delivery systems that quickly transport wafers through the FAP. Total investment in the FAP will be about 3 to 4 billion US dollars over time, which will directly benefit the state and local economy. GNAN Microelectronics, the chip unit affiliated with private automaker Geely Halting Group's tax subsidiary, has closed its pre A fundraiser without specifying the amount raised. Headed by venture capital firm Walden International, Vision 9 Capital, Garon Capital, and Wolfhorn Enterprises also took part in the financing round. The new funding will be used in the research and development of power semiconductor modules, production liability, and the hiring of technical staff. Founded in June 2022, GeneMan Microelectronics has already developed various products such as automotive grade insulated gate bipolar transistors and silicon carbide devices, said chief executive Pan Yun Bin that many of its products will be installed in vehicles next year. Blocked by the British government from acquiring Newport Wafer Fab, Britain's largest chips factory, Xperia has solicited the help of US law firm Aking Gump in the hopes of overturning the ban. The hurry comes just weeks after the UK Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, Grant Chaps, unwound the deal on national security grounds. Xperia is a Netherlands-based company that was acquired in 2018 by China-based WinTAC Technology. It's the Chinese connection and potential future use of the site that has His Majesty's government up in arms. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. As usual, more Power Semiconductors market news coming next week. Meanwhile, go to my blog for more information or reach me on LinkedIn. Have a great day!